Have you ever wanted to 3D print something big? No, I mean really big, <laughs> but your 3D printer just can't seem to handle the size you want? <laughs> well, today we're going to dive into three very similar and very helpful features in Bamboo Studio and Orca Slicer, and those are split to parts, split to objects, and cut. And these features, well, they're pretty easy, very powerful, and they're going to level up your 3D printing workflow. Before we get started, there's two key thoughts I want to make sure we all understand, and that's parts and objects. Now, parts can be thought of as individual parts of a whole model. You know, like a car. You have one overall car body, but your tires, the doors, you know, other parts are just that. They're parts of the main car body. Objects, on the other hand, well, those are different entities, you know, different bodies. Back to the car idea, if you remove a tire or a seat and you set it to the side, well, now it's separate from the object, the main car, and it's all by itself. You may be wondering why it matters to know the difference between these two, and we're going to see more on this in a minute, but if you separate a model the wrong way, well, you're going to understand really fast why these two distinctions matter. I should also point out that not every 3D model is going to be able to be separated into parts or objects. It really depends on how the designer created it and then saved it. Many of them will have these options though, and as you'll see, it's going to save you a lot of time. Looking at split to parts, let's go back to that car analogy. Sometimes you may get a 3D model that's just one piece, but if you separate it into parts, well, nothing really changes, at least that you can see. And that's because it's all still tied together in one overall model, but now we have a separate label for each individual part. You can see this by going into the Objects process just below Filament Settings. Clicking on each part will highlight the part on your model, and then you can see where it's attached. And here's your biggest takeaway for split to parts. If you have a multicolor 3D printer, you can set each part to a different filament. No manual coloring. Just select the part, you can press the number on your keyboard for the corresponding filament color, and bam! Coloring done. Split to objects though, it takes a bit more work, but if you need it, this one is definitely going to be a major lifesaver. Whether your model is just one piece or already split to parts, you can take it one step further and make each part its own individual body or object. And by the way, if it's already split to parts, well, that option's not going to be available. You'll run into your first hurdle the moment you click the button for split to object, especially if your model has pieces that are above the build plate. As you can see, they all drop instantly to the build plate and you could end up with a major mess on your hands. If that's not what you want and you get nervous, well, Control z for undo actually works really great in your slicer. If you did want to separate them out, well, don't panic. The next thing to do is click the Arrange button next to the build plate and see what happens. Now, you may end up with some of your new separate objects out in space and really not on the build plate. You'll need to either move them onto new build plates or you could just use that main Arrange All button at the top on the menu bar there or just press A on the keyboard. And that brings us to the main reason to use Split to Object, size and color. Every object can now be printed individually based on the single filament color you need and you can sort those objects based on the size capabilities of your printer. You can also print those pesky parts with overhangs and supports all by themselves in case there's a problem. No need to ruin a whole plate for just one problem part. That's the breakdown, pun intended, on split to parts and split to objects. Both commands can help you get the right colors in the right spot with or without a multicolor 3D printer. And you can even resize and print individual objects without affecting everything else that's what you're going for. Of course, that brings up the biggest drawback to split to objects itself. You're going to need to then put it all back together after you print it. So if you have something with a lot of gears or small parts, 
well, okay, that's going to be a problem. I mentioned at the beginning that there are three very similar and helpful features, and well, we've touched on two. The last one I wanted to mention is similar, but kind of different. And really, it only comes into play if you have a part that's too big for your build plate or really, really want to print a couple of pieces separately in different colors. And I'm talking about the cut command. For the cut command, you can think of it like cutting a cake, but with a really large knife. And that means that you only have the ability to cut all the way through, either top to bottom or side to side. But you can adjust the angle and go diagonally, which may not be great for a cake, but it could be great for your 3D model. Getting started, the cut command only works on an individual object, but that object can be in separated parts. Select your object, then either press C on the keyboard or click cut on the toolbar menu at the top, and the crazy three-dimensional controls you're going to see, well, they may look wild the first time you see them, but hang on, it's not that complicated. It should be fairly obvious what the different circles do based on the arrows. You can rotate the cut plane to get it in just the right orientation. And in the middle, you're going to see a square that's going to let you move that cut plane up and down or maybe back and forth based on how you have your outer circles rotated. The menu that goes along with Cut gives you a lot of options, and some of those aren't really going to be necessary for most people. For the most part, you're just going to want to keep the mode in planar. The rotation, movement, and height options, well, they allow for fine-tuning if you have problems getting in just the right spot or angle. The biggest things to know are these next options. First, add connectors. If you've split something into big parts, like maybe a helmet, when you glue it back together, you're going to be glad you use these. You can make the connectors different sizes and shapes, your pick, and then click where you want them to be. Be sure to leave enough space around them for strength. And once you place your connector, a corresponding hole is going to appear on the other part. Easy. Along with plug connectors, you can make holes for dowels. You can even create snap connectors. You're going to want to experiment with these and see what works best for every project. Next, you'll see options to select each object, keep orientation, place on cut, and flip. If you deselect an object, then that object's going to disappear when you cut, just leaving the other object. Keep orientation is going to make the object stay exactly as they were before cutting. Place on cut, well, does exactly what it says. And flip, well, it flips the object over after you cut it. And that's it. Split to parts, split to objects, or cut, you now have the ability to separate your 3D model into whatever you need so you can print it or paint it as big as you want on any 3D printer. Please subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to check out my other videos to get more help and info so we can all learn, create, and amaze. <laughs>